Hey, this is Jeff, and welcome back to my Fallout 3 challenge run to see how quickly I can get all skills to 100. I still think the answer is level 8, but last time I ran into a little problem, and I'm starting over at Vault 101 Exit to respec. Strength 1, Perception 8, Intelligence 10, and Luck 9, for the same reasons as the first attempt. To maximize the benefit from respawning skill books, we need to keep Endurance at 1, because that's the associated stat for the Big Guns skill. Charisma and Agility both need to be at least 4, so we can take the Scoundrel and Thief perks, respectively. And in what may be a surprising move, I'm putting the Excess in Charisma, for reasons I'll talk about in a bit. Tag skills, we need to leave big guns alone, so we can tag melee weapons and unarmed. And for the third, I'm going to tag barter, because this attempt is just as dependent as the first on making a lot of caps in a hurry. And now we can leave the vault. So what went wrong in the first attempt? Short version, the energy weapons bobblehead from Raven Rock got me over 3000 XP for only 10 skill points, and that put me into level 9 by the time I did everything else. The good news is we can skip all that and make up the difference with respawning skill books. I mentioned the big guns book on the flamer guy in the Bethesda ruins, but there's also a science book on an ant researcher in the Shalebridge tunnels who respawns. In for a penny, in for a pound, I guess. And there's level two. Three points in barter, and that's as high as it can go until we take the scoundrel perk. 15 points in energy weapons, and 2 points in explosives so we can disarm the bomb in Megaton right away. The Scoundrel perk doesn't unlock until level 4, so I'm going to take a rank of the Thief perk first. 5 points each in lockpick and sneak, just in case there are skill books in containers that I need lockpick 25 to open. I thought about skipping the bomb. I still need to minimize XP while maximizing skill points, and disarming it only unlocks two skill books for 300 XP. Plus, sleeping in the player home gives you a 10% XP bonus for being well rested. It's not a big deal to just wait 12 hours to let the bonus wear off, but in the first attempt I forgot a couple times and got some bonus XP I could have avoided. And there are plenty of unowned beds in the wasteland for healing, but I'm going to end up with more books than I can carry before I'm ready to read them, so I need a place to store loot. There are containers that don't respawn, but even though I know they're safe, I'd feel better storing them in my own house. And like I said, I need some quick cash, and Lucas gives you 100 caps for disarming the bomb. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with Charisma. My speech skill is actually lower than it was last time, but because my charisma is so much better, my chance of convincing Lucas to give me more money for the bomb is significantly higher. Still not good, mind you. Not an option, I'm afraid. We aren't exactly rolling in cash down here. Didn't think so. Hundred works. Great. Go ahead and see what you can do. Just be careful. Okay, you know the drill. Disarm the bomb, get the deed for the house, and sell everything I own except my stim packs and the clothes on my back. Yes. In the first attempt, I also gained maybe 200 XP from non-quest activities that I could have avoided. So this time, unless it directly gets me skill points, I will disarm no mines, pick no locks, hack no terminals, and especially kill no creatures. For that, the very first thing I'm going to do is pick up dog meat and Karen. I'm not sure if Dogmeat's previous owner always spawns with the same loot, but last time he had a roving trader outfit and some vodka, which buffed my barter skill just enough to get the discount on Karen's contract. Of course, I also had all the loot from Smith Casey's garage, so I might be a little short even with the discount, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Something non-hostile up ahead. Friendly people in matching outfits. Hey. Hey. The hell do you want? We're busy. I didn't actually hear any arguing, but what's going on? We're trying to find this place up north called Oasis. Supposed to have a lot of good stuff to grab. But we ain't interested in sharing it with every dirty waster that wanders in. So now, we're gonna have to kill you. Good luck with that. What? See ya. Well, I found you. Oh. Ow. Ah, over here. Help me. I got oh. your back. Oh. There's more where that <gasps> came from. Ah. 
On the plus side, now I have a map marker for Oasis, which is nice because it can be a pain in the ass to find if you don't. But that's less useful than it might otherwise be because I'm not planning on doing Oasis this time. And last time his old master was right around here. I don't know if it's a scripted event for the raiders to kill him or if he just spawns as a corpse, but I've never seen him alive. Yeah, he must have a hard-coded inventory because that's the same stuff as last time. The roading freighter outfit and the vodka being the critical things. I still think the easiest way to the mall is through the tepid sewers in Georgetown, but I do not want to go through the Bethesda ruins to get there. This is the, um... If you have Quo Vagis installed, this is the overlook where you can take Malibu on a date. Anyway, uh, this neighborhood can have random creatures or a few raiders, but I'm only level 2, so there shouldn't be anything dog meat can't handle. At higher levels, it can be giant scorpions or death claws, and that would be bad. Mole rats. No problem. <laughs> I say as it almost kills me. This is not Bethesda. So, <laughs> that building just popped into existence. Um, where am I? I don't think I've ever been to this part of the map before, or at least not from this angle. Is this a bridge where the super mutants have a camp? I'm sure I'd remember those statues. No? Okay, that's the road that leads to the National Guard Depot. Yeah, that's the bridge I was thinking of, with the Super Mutant Camp in the underpass. And I really don't want to fight them, so hopefully we can run over it and be gone before they figure out where I am. Yeah, there's a Super Mutant. And the camp's over there. Don't mind me, just passing through. There's another small super mutant camp right here. Dog meat, you okay? But it should be just one super mutant and a centaur or two. Sorry, lady. Can't afford the XP or the karma for rescuing you right now, but I'll be back later. And Meyer lurks. Great. I should be able to outrun it. The sewer's right up there. Good, dog meat's got it distracted. There's the memorial. We'll be back there later too, but... Huh, dog meat didn't feel like finishing it off. Some companions will get distracted and fight everything in your wake, and you'll <laughs> discover you're all alone when you run into something else, but he's pretty good about staying with you if you flee combat. Good boy. <laughs> the centaurs are still after us. Let's get inside. Just like last time, I'm going to gun it through here. Uh, two reasons. I don't want to get shot to ribbons while dog meat's killing everything. But I also don't want him to kill all the mole rats because this is... Excuse me? This is a good location for the Wasteland Survival Guide optional oh, objective. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting shot to ribbons quite enough on the move, so I definitely don't want to hang around. Ow. Combat shotgun in the back. Fortunately, I remembered to hotkey my stim packs, or it could have been all over right there. <laughs> I bet not many people have gotten the tutorial message about fast travel locations in Georgetown. Uh, the thing about Georgetown is, it's full of super mutants, and Dogmeat was holding his own until we got to the brute with a minigun at the end, and I had to help a bit. But I was kind of waiting for him to kill everything, so if I just keep running, dodge, and use cover as best I can, he'll catch up at the next loading screen. The only problem with that plan is, last time my endurance was 7. Now it's only 1, so I don't have nearly as many hit points to be tanking the damage from being shot in the back with a chain gun. Ha <laughs> ha, the centaur missed me this time. And here's where it gets scary. Try to keep as much rubble between him and me as I can. 
Which doesn't look like a lot, to be honest, but... I think we got away with it. And another map marker gets me to level 3. We'll take 8 points in energy weapons. 11 points in explosives. And 1 point in lockpick. For the perk, we'll take another rank of thief. 5 more points in lockpick and sneak. And on to underworld. Oh, that's not good. Last time they attacked dog meat and he tore him to shreds. I'll just lead him through these landmines that I didn't even know were here uh, until last time. Uh, Don't. I think the mine hurt me more than the dogs would have. Alright, now the Brotherhood's on the case, too. All clear. Thank down. you. Well, no sense wasting the meat. That'll be 988. I can't sell the vodka, because I need the charisma buff for Osrakal. Um, I hate to do this, but I'm going to sell one stim pack. One thousand and four. Talk about skin of your teeth. Give me a shout if you need anything else. I'll uh, put on the roving trader outfit. Drink the vodka, and just check to make sure we're at 50. Oh! Right. My barter skill was higher last time. Yeah, to get the most out of the respawning science books in Shale Bridge, I'll be taking the scoundrel perk instead of Daddy's Boy, so I had to cut off my barter skill a little lower. Which means vodka will not be enough this time. But I can still make this work if I buy the ant pheromones from Cindy. Okay, little side trip to Rivet City then. Okay, roving trader outfit and ant queen pheromones. And barter is 50. Okay, now we can talk to Azrakal. kind down here? Cool. A human, I don't care. The caps all spend the same. Azrakal, I am told that I am no longer in your service. Yes. All right, let's go. That never gets old. Let's get out of here. As you wish. Oh my god, he shot Azrakal. Yes, he did. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Last time, my strategy was to get the big ticket items out of the way first, XP-wise. The theory being that I'd know sooner rather than later how much headroom I had for the little stuff, like discovering locations when I went searching for books and bobbleheads. Which, I guess, kinda did work, although in hindsight I should have calculated the XP in advance like I did for the skill points. This time, I'm taking the opposite approach. I'm going to collect all the bobbleheads and books first to see if there are any unexpected prerequisites, like having to complete blood ties to access the book in Arafu, which is when I realized my original strategy wasn't going to work. This time, I did calculate XP in advance, and even if there are a few more surprises like that one, ditching the energy weapons bobblehead and therefore all the XP from the main quest should give me plenty of room to do a few side quests if I have to. <laughs> Karen's playing soccer with a mole rat head. And people say he doesn't have a sense of humor. Stop right there, mister. What you think you're doing in the Republic of Dave? I'm not here to hurt anyone. What is this place? This is the Republic of Dave. Duh. It's named for President Daddy. But you have to talk to him if you want to stay here. I think I'd like to meet Dave. Okay, I'll take you, but President Daddy doesn't always like new people. Okay, come with me. Psych! I'm really just here for his bobblehead. <laughs> You're almost as big as Dave.
perception permanently increased by one. And now let's take these back to Megaton. Hmm. Perception nine because I don't have the ant sight perk yet. I know I just said I was going to do the bobbleheads and books first, but as I realized last time, after Lesko gives you the bio enhancer in his lab coat, you don't actually get the XP until you find Brian to do home. So let's do that, and then our special stats are all squared away. I'm assuming Brian is still in Grey Ditch, because that's the first time we ever entered his trigger zone around the Super Duper Mart. He just hasn't had the time to start stalking us yet. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. There he is. Calm down, kid. No, those things will get me. I can't. I gotta keep going. Is there anywhere you can hide while I search? Well, there is the personal shelter next to the old diner. Papa always said to stay away from it. But I guess it's supposed to be safe. I'll head over there and wait inside. Hurry back. I won't. You guys doing okay? <laughs> Other than being slightly on fire, it looks like they are. Oh! <gasps> Where did that one come from? Oh! Help me! Sure is hot in here. Not as hot as it is out here, Brian. Well, enjoy your new home because finding someone to adopt you when this is all over would get me 300 XP. So that's not happening. And sight it is. Hold still, please. Next up will be the skill bobbleheads. Some of the books are in locked containers or behind locked doors, so I specifically want to get my lockpick and science up. There's the ant sight, plus one perception, and 25% fire resistance. Nice. I'll get the lockpick and science bobbleheads first, but I'm going to do them all for the same reason as the special bobblehead, just to make it easier to calculate how many points I can put in each skill when I level up. There's Perception 10, so specials are done. I'll also collect any books from the locations where the bobbleheads are, so I don't have to make another trip later. Oh. But I forgot a science book in the Queen Ant Chamber when we were clearing out the Nest Guardians for Lesko. Okay, let's go back for that and then do the bobbleheads. I realize this episode is a bit repetitive so far, because I've done a lot of the same things I did in the first attempt, just with slight differences in the order I did them and how I'm distributing skill points. So I'm probably going to edit out the rest of the bobbleheads, since you literally just saw me get them last week. But I thought it was worth pointing out this flamer guy again, because he's going to be the key to success or failure in this run. He respawns along with the other raiders in Bethesda every three in-game days, and every time he respawns, he has a new copy of the Big Guns book. Which means we can get our Big Guns skill to 100 using nothing but books, and the skill points we would have used on that when we level up can go to other skills, like energy weapons, because skipping the main quest means we won't be getting the energy weapons bobblehead. It's worth pointing this out, one of the skill books in the Bethesda offices west is under a bunch of other junk in a crate. So if you just give it a glance and think, hammer, worthless, you'll miss it. It's almost impossible to collect all the books in the game without the strategy guide or the Fallout wiki because of troll moves like this. I came in here for a book, but this raider has what looks like a unique weapon, Stab Happy. I don't think I have ever found that before. Of course not. A unique variant of a kitchen knife isn't quite as exciting as Vengeance or the terrible shotgun, but hey, it's here. This is, um, the Raid Shack, east of the Bethesda Ruins, by the way. And like I said, I just came over to grab the book while I was in the neighborhood and found Stab Happy. And if I haven't seen it before, I figure there might be some other people who haven't either. Now, on to the science bobblehead. And in another crate-related troll move, one of the skill books in Vault 106 is in this classroom under a bunch of junk in a crate at the bottom of a stack of crates. And with the loot from that trip, I have just enough for the love machine theme. And then we'll be broke again. Good hunting! Bye. Come back soon! Don't worry guys, I won't be keeping it this way forever. The only reason to buy it, other than aesthetics, of course, is that it comes with a free speech book. Which is not in the desk, it's on the desk. What's worth, excuse me... 
We'll eventually need to buy the scientist theme as well, which comes with a free energy weapons book, and I prefer that for my permanent decor. Well, here's a problem. You need lockpick 50 to get into Evan King's house for the repair bobblehead, and I'm not quite there yet. So, I'll be back. I don't have time to chit-chat with the help. Let me in already. Yeah, okay, be a smartass. See where that gets you. Fortune favors the bold, I suppose. Everyone has a price. What's yours? Eulogy Jones pays me enough not to take shit from someone like you. Besides, there's plenty of side benefits to keep me happy. Nope. What the hell is your problem? Let me in. My problem is I got a goddamn job to do, and that's keeping assholes and morons from bothering Eulogy Jones at his enterprise. And I'm not sure which you are. I'm thinking moron, because a smart man would have pissed off by now. You want to give me a reason I don't end you right this second? All your yapping is giving me a headache. Guess we'll do it the hard way. You looking for a fight, asshole? Just say the word. Hmm, maybe I could use someone like you. Think you can round up some assets for Eulogy Jones? Might get you into paradise. <laughs> cool. Arkansas is basically a raider, so enslaving him doesn't really bother my conscience, and it'll make my life easier when we do that part of the Wasteland Survival Guide. So, Arkansas. Arkansas is that asshole holed up in that minefield. Killed a whole Paradise Falls crew. Eulogy wants him to suffer. Did he really not give me a map marker for minefield? He really is an asshole. Well, I mean... You know, if just being a slaver didn't already give it away. Anyway, I'm going to head back to Megaton, drop off the bobbleheads I collected so far, sell my loot to Moira. Actually, Moira can give me a map marker for Minefield if I finish the objective to explore the Super Duper Mart first. Yeah, let's do that. First mistake. <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I might be getting slightly ahead of myself. I'm ahead. Die. Or more accurately, slightly ahead of my bodyguards. You got this, guys. Good job. Now, skill book, pharmacy, and food. So this is why I put the excess special points in charisma instead of agility at the beginning of the episode. I explained during my first attempt how the Survival Guru perk works. Short version, there are five different varieties of the perk, and which one you get is based on which type of responses you give Moira. The generic and snarky responses are always available, but the rest require one of your special stats to be at least seven. Last time we used the clever options, which are based on intelligence or perception, so the perk buffed medicine and science. This time we'll be maxing out science with respawning skill books, so that would be a waste. Instead, we'll go with the sly options to buff sneak and speech. But only two of the sly options are based on agility, the rest are based on charisma, and since we could only get one of them up to seven, it had to be charisma. It's very hard to talk my way past that many people shooting at me. Oh dear. Well, I guess the dangers around those old supplies keeps it from being smooth sailing. Otherwise, they'd have already been looted, huh? I've heard stories about a ghost town that's just full of mines. Traders just call the place Minefield. I hear there's a playground in the middle of town. Reach that point and come back, and I'm sure you'll have some stories to tell. And I think I have enough money to buy the scientist theme for the house now. Of course! I have all sorts of items and themes for that place that may interest you. I need you to wait here so you don't kill Arkansas before I get the collar on him. I shall wait here until you return for me. Dog meat, you too. If you walk up the main street, Arkansas shoots the cars. They explode. It's hard to avoid mines while you're running away from that. It's just a nightmare. I prefer approaching from the other end. If you take a live-and-let-live live attitude, even though he's a psychotic sniper, you can sneak by him or use a stealth boy, and there's generally less mayhem. 
Of course, I'm not going with the whole live and let live thing, but the same approach also provides much better cover so you can get close enough to mez him. Or just kill him if you're not working for grouse. One drawback is there's a spawn point for random encounters by the water tower, and it looks like whatever it is this time is hostile, but I have bigger problems. Hopefully they don't notice me or don't chase me, even if they do. So there's the building where Arkansas has his sniper nest, and he has a pretty clear view of the whole town. But if you come around the back of it, there are walls that obstruct his line of sight. I'm in caution, not danger, so somebody knows I'm here, but they don't know where I am. Just make sure that when you drop down, you're inside the fence, or else things will get very exciting very quickly. Um, no, I don't need the Mezzer out yet. It blocks half the screen, and I need to be able to see. There is a mine at the bottom of the steps, but conveniently, I need one for Moira anyway. You can kind of keep these columns between you as you go up the stairs. Nope, he spotted me. Just charge him. Whoa, what's going on? Who are you again? I'm a slave now. Don't kill me, please. I'm going. Now, whenever you collar somebody, you should always immediately fast travel to Paradise Falls. As long as you're on the same area of the map as the victim, they can run into wildlife and get killed, which would be particularly bad in this case, because then I'd have to go for one of the other VIP targets, and none of them are a public menace like Arkansas. Thanks to you, we finally have that sniper Arkansas in a collar. You have no idea how many good men that prick put into the dirt. Go on up, hotshot. Just don't screw around or things will get ugly. No second chances. Got it? Got it. I'm just gonna grab a bobblehead and you'll never need to worry about me again. No good crap -ass I cannot believe I forgot to get the key off Arkansas while he was mezzed, but I think I can still get the skill books in Minefield without picking any locks. We just need to get the key to the slave pens from Eulogy's pad and then pickpocket the Minefield key off Arkansas. There it is. All right, nobody saw that. So far, so good. By the way, some people might not realize this, but if you do a lot of work for Grouse, most characters you enslave disappear completely from the game once they get here, but the four VIP targets actually do live in the slave pens over here. There he is. Don't mind me. Got it. <laughs> I've lost karma. Because enslaving him wasn't bad enough, now I'm adding insult to injury. Ah, the uh, sly option for this one must be agility because it's not available to me. But as long as the sly options we do take outnumber any of the others, we'll still get the right perk, so it doesn't matter which one we pick. That whole town is a trap. There was a sniper out there just waiting for me. Not quite as much of a ghost town as they say, is it? Good work staying calm and collected under pressure. It'll be a great example for the book. 200 rads should be enough for basic sickness. But if you can get 600 or more rads, my test will be even more accurate. Just make sure you can get back here, and I'll see to it that you're well taken care of. We'll sell the rest of the loot from Minefield, but it just occurred to me. The reason I stored a few outfits in my locker instead of selling them was for situational skill checks. The Vault Utility Jumpsuit buffs your lockpick skill by five, so I actually could have gotten the repair bobblehead out of Evan King's house at any time since I hit level three. All right, well, we'll go do that and then start on the books. Anyway, let me see what you have for sale. Sure thing. Okay, the next location on the list is the Anchorage Memorial, and it'll save a trip if we do that part of the Wasteland Survival Guide at the same time. So let's stand by the bomb until we get 600 rads.
And by the way, thanks to the commenters who pointed out that you can greatly increase your rat intake by drinking the water around the bomb while you wait, which is definitely safer than standing by the barrels behind Springvale School. Let the men, women, and children of the earth come forth to gather and behold the power of Adam. Let those who dwell here in his favored land attend now to the words of the prophet of Adam. No thanks. I've heard quite enough. Let's go turn this into Moira and head to the memorial. There's charisma. Oh, I feel fine. <coughs> Never better. <coughs> no problem at all. <coughs> oh, you poor dear. Putting on a brave face like that. Well, don't worry. It'll all be better. And it's for a good cause. Now, let me take a few notes, and I'll handle that nasty radiation with a bit of my own homemade rad cure concoction. The second chapter is going to be a bit trickier, I think. It'll cover how to handle creatures out there, for better or worse. For example, repelling mole rats, uh, learning about mirelurks, and when all else fails, how to handle being injured. So let's buckle down and get to work on this chapter. What's first? Uh, mirelurks. Mirelurks are a big threat in some areas, and knowing more about them can help people learn to avoid or even outsmart them. So I picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat. I need you to hide one in one of the spawning pods in their lairs. And be sure not to kill any Mirelurks inside their nest. If you do, it could ruin the validity of the study. I have to go now. Good luck with that research. And level four. Put two points in lockpick, and now I don't have to carry around the vault utility jumpsuit anymore. 13 points in medicine. And five points in melee weapons. And for the perk, this is going to be controversial. I always take educated at level four, and it seems like that would be even more critical in this run. But with the surplus skill points from the respawning books, it's not as important as you think. If we took Educated now, Comprehension at level 5, and 3 skill perks at level 6 through 8, that's a total of 42 bonus points. If we take 4 skill perks and Comprehension in there somewhere, that's a total of 40. So the net loss is only 2 points, that's 1 extra book to collect. So I'm actually going to take a rank of Scoundrel to get five points each in Barter and Speech right now. And she's out of money, so let's do the rounds and sell some loot. There's the full collection of skill bobbleheads, minus energy weapons, of course. Now, I definitely need Karen and Dogmeat with me for the books, since we have to explore the whole memorial. As for the Observer, I tested it, and any Mirelurks killed by your companions do not fail the optional objective, only if you kill them yourself. If I wanted to adhere to the letter and spirit of Moira's request, I could sneak in alone through the back door like last time and come back later for the books, but doing it this way is more efficient and saves XP for picking the lock on the back door. I've got one. Look out. Keep firing. Oh, interesting. There's a spawn point near Dukov's place for... Well, it's not a random encounter, it's always Enclave fighting wildlife, but I didn't know Enclave would appear this early in the game. That's good news, because it's kind of unusual to get power armor at level 4. I mean, I can't wear it because I don't have power armor training yet, but Karen can, or I can sell it for cash. Even in poor condition, it's worth a lot of money. Well, by 4th level character standards, anyway. In fact, I'll take all of that. Now, we're on the wrong side of the water, because I don't want the XP for disarming the minefield on the bridge to the memorial, but it's not very wide, so I might be able to jump it. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Epic fail. There is a spawn point for actual random encounters on top of the memorial, and last time it was a hit squad sent by Mr. Burke because I disarmed the bomb in Megaton, but this time... We slander you. fighting a rad scorpion. Where? Hang in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. But that's actually very convenient. The last component I need to make a dart gun is a red scorpion poison gland, and you don't see many at this level. 
I don't actually have the schematic yet, but we will be needing a dart gun soon, because some of the book locations have creatures even Caron and Dogmeat would have trouble with otherwise. Like Deathclaws. Yeah, we'll be provoking Deathclaws at level 4 or 5. Looking forward to that. But let's start with Mirelurks and see how that goes. There's one on the table here, and last time I said you need to pick the lock on this safe to get the one inside, but I was wrong. Over here, behind the Nuka-Cola machine, there's a hollow tape, which has the password for this terminal that unlocks the safe remotely. There's the book, and a door component that we need to get the third book. Might as well take all of that. By the way, I'm obviously using a cheat sheet to find books. Collecting them all just by exploring isn't technically impossible, but it's close enough. I mean, you saw the two hidden in crates, and there are plenty more like that. I copied the full list of skill books from the Fallout Wiki, pasted it into a spreadsheet, and sorted it by location to be as efficient as I can. I'll visit them in alphabetical order, more or less, just to make it easier to keep track of where I've already been, unless there are places close enough to each other that it makes sense to do them at the same time. I'll skip any that require you to complete quests, like doing blood ties to unlock the book in Arafu, and once I have all the rest, I'll decide which quests are worth it. If I can do them all and stay under level 8, fine, but if not, I'm more likely to do a quest that gives you 300 XP in 5 books than one that gives you 900 XP in only 1 book. I think this door leads to the service tunnel where we plant the Observer from Moira. Yes. The last book is down here as well. I know it's a little late to be stealthy at this point, and like I said, it doesn't matter if Karen and Dogmeat kill Mirelurks. I only fail the optional objective if I kill any, but I also don't want to get cornered. Hide the observation device. And the book is over here in one of the little rooms where the Mirelurks hang out. It's not one of the ones with the egg clusters. They're gonna spot me any... Yep. <laughs> Wasn't I just saying I didn't want to get cornered? Where? Bring it. Oh, that's not good. If I can get in there, I'll give Dogmeat a stim pack. Okay, never mind. That takes care of that. Now, uh, which one is it? Not that one. There it is. Always the last one you pick. Since we got the door component from the safe upstairs, it only requires repair 35. If you don't have it, the skill check is a lot harder. And in here we have a Nuka Cola Quantum. Medex. And the skill book. What's in the locker? Ammo. Always take that. And over here, Anchorage stash key. I'm not sure what that's for, but I'll take it just in case it unlocks something we need to get into later. And that hollow tape probably tells you where. <laughs> the tenderizer. Sledgehammer variant, I guess. That's two unique weapons I found today that I don't think I've ever seen before. Which, despite how much I've played this game, doesn't really surprise me, because I rarely specialize in melee weapons. What was the one in Bethesda? The unique kitchen knife. Stab happy. And I don't want to unlock that, so back the way we came. While we're in the neighborhood, there's another book in the little super mutant camp we passed by our first time through here. I don't think you can get out of the water right there, so we'll go back and jump across near the tepid sewers. Assuming I don't screw up with my jump button timing and fall in again. And, yes, one for two. <laughs> Nothing to brag about, but better than no for two. Uh, can they get across? Okay, Karen made it at least. Huh, one of them's dead. I know they were both still alive and chasing us the first time we found the tepid sewers. Maybe a Mirelurk got it or something. Or maybe Dogmeat ran over and finished it off while Karen was killing that Enclave soldier. I don't know. 
That one's still alive. Uh -huh. But I'm right. guessing not for long. Keep firing. Well, that's the end of that. Nope. And the super mutant must be in the tent with the hostage. I guess I have to go around to the front to wake him up. I'll wear your bones around oh, my neck! Where? I bet you won't. Oh, that's it. That's it. Please, sir! Oh. Nope. The book is in the trailer. Need some light. Right here. And a couple stem packs. Now let's go see about the hostage. Oh, that's a dude. The prisoner I said I'd come back for was a woman. I guess they already hauled her off to Vault 87. Which may be bad news for you, my friend, because I didn't make any promises to you. On one hand, I want to keep my karma neutral so I don't have Talon Mercs or Regulators chasing me around, and freeing him would make up for pickpocketing Arkansas. You know, after I enslaved him. <laughs> On the other hand, I'm almost positive that freeing hostages gives you a surprisingly large amount of XP. And... Yeah, my karma is still neutral, so... I realize this isn't particularly reassuring after what I just said, but... After I get my skills to 100, I'll come back for you. Please. God. Someone. No, seriously, I mean it this time. Sort of. Maybe. I gotta go. I'll bet most people would have just gone in there, guns blazing without half a thought. But not you. You're the best research assistant ever. I've been getting a good signal. But what do you think about them from your first-hand observations of them? I think your signal must be screwy because I didn't go in guns blazing, but my companions certainly did, and most of them are dead. Anyway, there's a charisma option. They seem mostly independent. I don't think there's any sort of society there. Well, they certainly aren't making tea and having nice chats, obviously. But maybe you're right. Any social development is minor at best. You know, Arlington is coming up soon on my list of books, so I might as well finish this chapter, get the library objective, and save myself a trip. I'm ready for more research on the second chapter. There's a sort of mole rat repellent I've developed. You could test it out on just a few mole ratties, but for real testing, try it on ten or more. There should be plenty in the tepid sewers downtown. Back at the tepid sewers again. Yes, what is it? You know the drill. Wait here. I shall wait here until you return for me. Dog meat, you too. Hopefully most of the mole rats are still alive since I sprinted through on the way to hire Caron. Well, there's one at least. That one's dead. And the turret is almost certainly still on, so don't linger in this hallway. There might be some left on the other side of the raider camp, but I need Karen and Dogmeat for that. Between the ones I just killed and the ones behind Megaton, we have to be close to 10 at this point. Karen, can you take care of that? <laughs> he set off the gas. Where? Well... That worked, but I wouldn't put it on your resume. Charisma. I don't believe this is as non-lethal as you had expected, to put it lightly. Oh dear. All of them? Well, uh, I don't think I could water down the formula any further. With that much testing, I guess it's beyond correction. <sighs> eh, go ahead and keep it. When you're ready, come back here with some serious injuries. Maybe a crippled limb or two. And I'll take notes and fix you up. I'll be waiting here with plenty of bandages for you. So don't worry. Just go get horribly injured. Oh, and be careful. And let's see if she respawned enough caps to buy my loot. Dog meat? How did... Well, 
At least he's not on the couch. <laughs> or the kitchen table, I guess. That's, um... Yeah. Okay, perfect world. At this point, I'd have 11 creatures killed. The Rad Roach Dad makes you kill in the tutorial mission, and 10 mole rats for Moira. Long story short, I loaded an old save, and I had five when I left the vault. And it took me way longer than it should have to realize it was the Rad Roaches I killed to save Butch's mom, which is how I got the Tunnel Snake outfit, duh. But fingers crossed, those extra kills won't come back to bite me. I mean, I'm not even close to level 5 yet, so hopefully it won't matter. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you can pick up the card catalog and library archive without the quest actually being active, and then just turn them in when you get to that part of the quest. With any luck, I can get seriously injured with a crippled limb in the process, and kill three birds with one stone. But I'm about out of time, so I'm going to call it a day, and I'll see you next week.